Hello and welcome to 100 Guns at Holtz. Before we go any further, just to let you know, we do have 12 selected items from the sealed bid we're going to put right at the end. 12 absolutely gorgeous little bargains. You can skip to that. Or you can just watch to that, because there is so much good stuff before we get there. It's going to be a bit of a different episode this time, because, well, we've had to bump our plans forward by about three weeks because of this lockdown. This means it's going to be a bit higgledy-piggledy. It does mean we're not going to get a view at the full catalogue, and it does mean that the bargains video will have to wait. And in fact, we're going to be doing just one, or maybe two pieces of a very large bumper episode. Let's start off with beauty. A Stephen Grant side lever. Look at the lines on that gun. Which is sleek and beautiful. The side lever opens as easy as a top lever. There are no drop points, no harsh lines. This is, I was gonna say the original round body, but this is just slick and beautiful. If I need to explain it, you're not gonna get it. Let's go look at some guns. All right, this. Oh, it's a Sharps bore chart. So this will be a 4570, I presume. Falling block. Old reliable on the top there. This is a proper classic original. I was lucky enough some years ago to shoot uh, not quite one of these, but something very similar. And I remember distinctly this butt plate is just unforgiving. Not only is it solid hard metal, these very small spikes when you're wearing flimsy fancy shirts like me. Oh, that's metal. Yes, that's metal. That's disgusting. Right there. You've got your set trigger here as well, which is quite interesting. We won't dry fire it. You have to pull that back to set the trigger, ready for super light match rifle, which Quigley fans, it's not a Quigley rifle, obviously, but it's, uh, yeah, what an awesome bit of history. This is a sort of plain history I can get into. We're talking about old stuff. It doesn't always have to be fancy, but fancy certainly helps. What's that? A Blaza. Is it a Blaza? Yeah, it is. It's a Blaza SR850-88. Obviously, everyone knows Blazers nowadays, but back then, this is what Blazers were, a kind of fancy, odd bolt system before their straight pull came into place. Clever, and it's all sort of on the road to development of what we know and love today as the R8. The rotating bolt head locked into the whole top reach segment. This is in 300 win. Interesting. Bit of... Blaza porn from the history. The SR850. A slightly different, var well, different variation. It's all again in the timeline of Blaza for those aficionados. Very similar, but a, a different lockup, and as you can see, a different system entirely in terms of cocking. Very, very sweet, actually. Not as efficient as the current one, obviously, but still beautiful. And you'll see here something that will turn certain people on, like me. Is that a Mauser? Yeah, it is a Mauser. How's that? Again, I presume these are all probably from a similar person. They're all not antiquated, but very different, straight polesque, but turn bolt, top slidey rifles. That's a very sad sheep, <laughs> <laughs> that Mouflon. He's unhappy. He's hanging his head in shame. <laughs> He's not proud of what he's done. <laughs> There's some really beautiful rifles. This is probably is it my favourite. I think that Scottish rifle is probably actually my favourite just because it, it hides itself very well. But this, any colour hardened Mauser action rifle literally gets my vote. It could be the ugliest thing in the entire world, but the concept of a colour hardened action is just beautiful. And this one does obviously do it very well. Colour hardened rings, quick detachable. Isn't that just beautiful? Colour hardening and gold do belong together with small amounts of gold and much colour hardening. Beautiful trigger. This is just a stunning rifle. This is well, it's not a WW Green, it's a WW Greener case. It's a Wesley Richards, but also not quite a Wesley Richards. Side by side. It has had a really nice rejointing job done at some point. Live pigeon gum. And also, for those of you who are well into your fashion, is an Amber, Abercrombie and Fitch marketed one. Flat filed rib, but actually just finished in with the barrel. Small little brass mid bead, which is what a mid bead should be, and then a fairly hideous large white front bead. Pistol grip, metal grip cap, long trigger tang, big beaver tail forehead. It's like a little baby over and under. In fact, 
Everything about it is quite nice. It even is multi-choked. Look at that. Such asked me about the Beaver Tail Ford. Is it nice? No. It is not. Does it look good? Actually, you'll struggle to find one that looks better than that. And it serves a purpose. Just, I think, it kind of is for me in, in the, sh the shooting, but on its side by side, it just... Come on, Sasha, tell me what this is. MP40. It's a Springfield, mate. Classic. Even the most basic Call of Duty lover would know that, as you do. This is precisely the sort of gun I actually know about. It's historical, it's Epic. cool. Some one of the best open sights of a rifle, and I say that as a Lee Enfield lover, but the open sights on this are just somehow much, they're just beautiful. Probably one of my favorite rifles I've shot in a while. And you ever shot one? Have I shot one? Yeah, of course I've shot one. Mm -hmm. um, I thought about getting one of these for deer stalking, to be fair, same as I've thought about getting all sorts of other I stuff like for deer stalking, that. but I'd never use it, because I'd just grab my basic go-to rifle, because that's who it is. But this is a beautiful gun. An absolutely beautiful gun. That's a bit more like it, isn't it? Look at that. That gorgeous. That little BSA sight there, that in itself is just a stunning thing. Ready? There ain't no one who likes anything mechanical and doesn't like that. What a beauty. Oh, BSA. And now something a little bit different. We are gonna do a separate video on this. You may already have seen it. The Rizzini family are huge in gun making. And I say huge in that there are many of them and they make some of the finest guns out. And when I say some of the finest guns out, right here I have a pair of flawless 20 bores. Absolutely. Hold on. Rizzini hate you, don't they? Different Rizzini. Okay. Well, uh, the family. They don't hate me. He seemed pretty good spirited about it, to be honest. <laughs> I would have taken it much worse. <laughs> when I say flawless, we have done a full video on these, so I'll keep it short, is to say that some guns are not the best made. Some guns have very small faults. I say small faults, we're talking about faulty manufacturer. Lacking in symmetry, lacking in perfection. You can go, oh, that very small bit there doesn't come up to scratch. But this gun really does belong. I think that's the thing, belong in the top five gun makers or top 10 gun makers of all time. Like it really is that beautiful of all time, of current production. The wood is perfect. Everything about it is very beautiful. And they're up for 55 grand for the pair, which is a lot of money. But not when you consider they would be three times that new. Anyway, you've seen the video on these. Let's move on. A WW Greener 12 ball stopping rifle, I believe. Four drams of powder. What an absolute beast this is. If you like, about the way that it actually retracts the pins on half cock and forces them to come out. So you can go to your half cock, open your gun after you just shot your 16th tiger of the morning and go for gold. Beautiful twist steel barrel, it's not the finest, but these guns work, I suppose, working guns in the grand scheme of things. What a stunning gun. The way those hammers sit, the way the rifle, the rifle, it is a rifle, the rifle, rifle falls. And to be honest, I don't make this look easy, but this is a very heavy rifle, so I shouldn't manage it. For the style, this is a really beautiful, lock plate. And the other side's not bad either, actually. It's captured some real actual pheasanty movements. You know, everyone does the pheasant in this, but to, you know, doing pheasants, going about their stuff, that's some life in that. That is a beautiful bit of artwork right there. Next. Now we're to shiny. Um, if you like loud wood, you'll probably think this is the most beautiful thing out. It certainly is striking. It certainly is beautiful. However, because it is what it is, it is also immensely fragile. Between that very fragile headwork there, there is a crack that runs all the way around, which is a bit of a shame. This large pistol grip cap, that very thin horn edge there. And so this is a Johann Altschaus. If you watch, press this gold-plated unit in the front, the block falls down at the back, and you put in your 6x62R cartridge into the back, close up, Push forward for set, safety off, boom. Certainly an interesting um, scene on the side there, isn't it, Sash? Let me just note <laughs> I'm not entirely sure what's going on. I'm sure there is some mythic story that, that it relates. So She's out after a nice road here. That's a lot more reasonable in my head. Right, just to be clear. Yes. That's a woman. A, a huntress. Uh, probably Diana, yes. With a bow. 
with a bow hunting a roebuck. That is... And then there's two more roebucks running away, and she is naked. Okay, right, so... She's got a, a very nice figure to her as well. Oh, there's no denying that. Very much so. However, she seems to be mid-air. No, no, she's not. She's... If you, well, you don't understand, she's knelt in the rocks. Closely... We're going to take a bit of a break from nudity and golden guns. We'll come back to them in a sec to have a look at this. This is the car park. So this is a, what, 1968 B25. I'm not sure on grade or model. What I can tell you is this is a bit of me. There's two reasons I like this. No, three. Firstly, that width of rib, it's just old fashioned, isn't it? But it is nice. Um, and if you take the beads out of one of those, or at least the, put a smaller bead in the front, they're actually quite a nice thing for shooting, certainly, I don't know, having fun. And everyone looks at it and thinks it's stupid. Secondly, look at that forend. Uh, forend is straight out of 1968. A tapered, harsh front is quite a, it's a statement. Certainly a statement, it looks like a Benelli 4 and just flipped around. And the third thing I like is that it's actually a really tidy, not shot out, not utterly abused, although it's obviously old, 1968 Browning. That in itself is just a nice thing. Back to the forming quickly, and Sasha has pointed out that it looks horrible. Yes, it does, um, but it is also very interesting. What you'll also like there, if you look at that, Watch this. You've got that little metal boring tip that moves up with the barrel. That's a bit different instead of having wood. All in all, just a rather interesting browning as B25s go. Have a look at this border work up here. Is that not the vine? And then, to top it all off, three piece forend. This is just superb. And the style probably isn't you know, appealing to many. But you can always find something you absolutely love about this. Just the action. And I mean the action, I mean the actual action that's happening in the engraving, the movement they've managed to capture there, and all these different scenes. It is good looking. And yet strangely, I still wouldn't own it, but it is beautiful. The sort of gun you'd own if we could own guns for art's sake in the UK, easier, and you know, I'd already bought all the other things that I want. To a more modern era, a John or J. Roberts and Son, sorry. Before we look at the gun, these are beautiful. Look at these. I know that's kind of pointless, but that endears me to this gun utterly. It is um it is beautiful. Something a bit different, a bit more modern, just to show that we still got it. Built on a Purdy action, and actually adorned with grouse, a little woodcock, and some more grouse. It's a good looking gun, it's a very good looking gun. Very nice. It is nice, and I'm sure it's this poor. I remember the first time I walked in here and was kind of wowed by the amount of amazing guns. And all the guys said, they'll lose their wow factor and you'll start really finding out what you truly love. Right. And that is true. Right. I can't explain it yet because I'm still kind of figuring out what it is about the guns, certainly of this sort of level, that I prefer most of. But I also, I think it's probably the answer is the weird. Trios of guns that don't match but are sort of built together as a family, double cool. Uh, this is Charles Hellis and Sons. This one's a 28 ball. Its brother, number two, is a 20 ball. And his big brother, number one, is a 12 ball. They're all vaguely different, um, but all vaguely the same. And in the same, I mean, in the hand, stock, shape, etc., feel similar. Yeah, I feel like you have to be a certain level of dude to go, I want three guns of different calibre. Mm. This sort of indicates, we were just chatting to Simon actually, that there is a certain level of game shot that he really isn't interested in the, the killing aspect. They'd rather have one single gun and go, I will take my 28 this drive, I'll take my 20 and my 12. And you go, that one's mine, bang. I always thought if I was gonna have a trio made, when I win the lottery and have a spare, you know, again, depending on maker, and I'd probably do it on the cheap because, well, even if I want a million quid, it doesn't go that far, unfortunately. It would be the 12, the 20, the 28, and probably the 410 of all similar stylings like a family. I mean, that's a much more classy thing than a pair. Um, given that the sort of, I say the sort of days where you're double gunning aren't my bag, I suppose it's just, it's not, not my bag. 
just out of my price room and actually I think I enjoy remembering the bird, just not having to stress about hitting a bag number and just stressing about making fun of my friends and having fun. I guess that's a thing. But hey, also imagine you have a really heavy drive and you shoot a few too many, you can take the 28 on the next one and be really picky. So this 100 guns is probably a bit more rifle than usual, but this one is both a rifle and a shotgun. In the case here, you have 375 H&H &H barrels. And this action also takes this 20 ball set of barrels. It is a Abiatico and Salvanelli. And just come and look at this engraving. You can say what you want about anything else to do with these guns, but they know how to make a gun look good. From the red pad on the back to the checkering. But just look at the Bellino. And this is done by the Academia il Bellino by Volpi and Botella. Look at that. This is stunning. And this gun has had probably a, a point in its life where it was a little bit better finished than this. Only, only by a little bit of age and tarnish. But look, is it not just stunning? If I said that both forends do this. Just amazing to get the engraving lined up with two different forends, then let alone this sort of beautiful forend style. And it might not be your bag, but it is perfectly executed. What a beautiful thing. The only strange thing about it is that this little flat here has had the finish taken off for some reason. I presume at some point it might have been dinged and been fixed, but it's the only strange thing about it. Everything else about it is really genuinely beautiful. Look. Even the locking screws inside there are beautifully engraved that no one is ever going to see. Just... Wow. Beautiful. Look. Look at that rib. Yeah. I think we can all agree that this is beautiful. And just to prove we're not always nasty about Belgian guns, because uh, you know, they have a bit of reputation over here for just being the cheap of the cheap. They make stuff like this. This is a Le Beau Corelli. This is about one of the best that comes out of Belgium, and it is beautiful. Its style isn't necessarily British, but it is really very gorgeous. I mean, look at the piece of wood on there. Everything about it is just nice. As I said just now, you would change your name to that monogram fit, because that is beautiful beyond belief. That really is the best of the best sort of thing but they didn't put their initials in the oval. <laughs> Interesting one, but that is very nice. A good quality, modern-ish, side by side. Not all of which is true for this next one. What I can say about this is this is gorgeous in most every way. A Lang's patent, it's a Joseph Lang and some underlever, push forward. Isn't this a bit special? Um, I mean, it's, it's, it's had a bit of a life by all means, but you know, it's, it's older than time. Look at the way the action, the whole trigger plate comes up, the way the wood comes over the top. The automatic safety is just beautiful. The Damascus, everything about this gun is fantastic. It even has a magic lump that I don't know what it does. Um, I'm gonna have to go and find out. I don't know, I'm gonna go find out, but just to look at it. I think my next gun might have to be something without a top lever. It probably won't be, because they generally go for more money than I have, but is that not? Stunning, absolutely stunning. Quick trip across the border to Hamburg, Hartmann and Weiss. I think we did the German gun makers, and in that probably featured something very similar to this. And as I said earlier, anything with color hardened action, floor plate and trigger, it kind of gets my vote, but this really is top draw beautiful stuff look at that just look at that isn't that nice isn't that unnecessary who even likes necessary anyway what a beautiful rifle next just found out what it is this is a secondary side mounted safety bolt what that does we do not really know um say we i do not really know um is it fascinating sure is. I like this a lot. What a beautiful, sleek looking gun. Top leaves are dead. Well, I mean, they're not. Because, 
try and find a side lever over number. I don't because they do exist, but in my price bracket, which is, um, well, you saw the sort of guns I've been buying recently, and that's very much me. Oh, I know where this is here. This is a Charles Ingram that is really reasonable value. And I know that's not really any more I can add to it, but it is beautiful. And it is Scottish. And the Scots do know how to make guns. Uh, it's one of the things that I found fascinating when I was sort of first learning about guns, is that the Scots actually have a really good trade, still have a very good trade, and they seem to only make great quality stuff. And this really does sit there amongst that. Lovely. All right, here's something you don't see every day. This actually tickles me more than it should. This is the Thomas Johnson's reverse lever affixed upon a Purdy hammer gun. And it is a Purdy hammer gun that uses a slightly non-Purdy-esque engraving style that is nonetheless beautifully executed. You ready for this? I understand that this is not infinitely amusing but it is also infinitely amusing. Especially when you take the Thomas Johnson's reverse lever and you mix it with borderless checkering on the forend, which is gorgeous, and this. Yes, very yes. Get accused often of coming here and just looking at the sort of, not even the best of the best, but just fancy old stuff. And that's obviously because that's what interests me. However, they do do stuff like this as well. Uh, for those of you who want custom-built Accuracy International Remingtons with 500-inch barrels that weigh 5,000 tons uh, in some calibre, that's very exciting, I'm sure. And it's not that I'm against black rifles. Oh, sorry. And this is a great bit of kit, a great setup for what it's built for. However, if we're going to talk about black rifles, what is in this case is a bit of me. So this is a Johan Fanzoi, and I understand it probably doesn't fit the traditional black rifle space, but it doesn't really bear much talking about, a bit like the other things here. So when I say black rifle, I just, in this instance, mean that everything is blacked. Beautifully, beautifully blacked. Apart from the gold and silver bits. Let's throw this together, and we'll have a little compare. So I'm not really sure how to do this uh, comparison. I've just been told that this is not really technically a black rifle, but it is like, to me, this appeals to all of the black rifle things. Same as it would if it was, you know, a blacked out Range Rover, a blacked out M5, all these sort of dark, cool looking things. This kind of fits into that sort of badass category, but it's got gorgeous wood and it's handmade and it's stunning. And they are slightly different price points. This is a six to eight and this is I think, a couple of grand, two and a half. It's got a Night Force, it's got a Swarovski. This has got tier ones. This has got fully engraved Celtic, beautiful golden lead rings. I suppose we should start at the back in terms of saying that this one has a lovely, it's actually a proper Fanzoi Wagyu pad. Beautiful wood. Look, just, just, I can't even explain how much I love this gun. It is amazing. Yeah, just wow. To say this is just, nothing but the best and it's in 3006 you know usually you see beautiful rifles like this and they're in a caliber that you would never ever own i should say you could own this for the same price as <sighs> annoy anybody but you could buy yourself a blazer um with a bit of nice grade on it and be in for more than money than this or any sort of modernish gun. i don't know why you wouldn't buy this if you had a spare 10 grand and you liked rifles you could you chop a bit off the front and sight and have it screw cut if you really want it, but just look at the full rib, the dip, the sights. Yeah. Well, uh, you could probably guess why I like it. It's just beautiful. So doing one of those bits where we then dive back to a gun because we found something else out about it that is mildly fascinating. This Purdy, the left hand top lever, or the reverse top lever, the reverse lever, is interesting. Um, firstly, have a look at how the actual bite works. It is a real simple pivot system, actually. It, it's not a bad idea, as much as it didn't take off. But this gun is actually converted from percussion. 
meaning that these barrels once didn't look like this. They once had a block on the back that was being chopped off. Hence, interestingly, the writing on the rib is further back than you'll find on any other purdy. Well, apart, it. unless it's been converted. Sorry, there you go, you can actually see it now. Unless it's been converted. There in lies the fact that it is a older looking gun, but in a more modern style with the barrels. You can tell this because it is an 1858 seal number, but the actual whole locking bolt system is an 1863 locking bolt system. Is that fascinating? Depends on what you think, I suppose, but is it interesting? Oh yeah, definitely. Does this make this gun extra special? We, the converted percussion, reverse top lever, button fore end detach bit. When I mean, you think about the work that would have taken to chop out the bottom there and inlet your lumps on the bottom, that's fascinating. Hence the action looks a bit different. Hence the whole gun is just, oh, utterly unique. That's special. That's very special. From a distance, a commonal garden, side by side, side lock, top lever, Prince of Wales gun. That is, at least until you turn it like this. This is ribless. That in itself is amazing. So this gun, Vickers Limited, comes with two sets of barrels. The first here looks very much like a standard set of barrels. Two and three quarter inch chambered, 12 bore nitro approved, unexciting. Vickers Armstrong's Limited at Westminster, London. This set, as you can see, is ribless. Got a couple of adjoining bits there, but apart from that, it is ribless. Here is where it gets very clever. This is a three and one quarter inch chambered gun. This is a wild fouling gun. And as such, when you put this gun together, the first thing I thought when I saw it, I saw it is that it would not be that heavy, but you pick it up and actually there is a lot of weight there. That is because these three and a quarter inch chambered barrels are thick and strong. Because they're thick and strong, they weigh a lot. To lose weight, they took the ribs out. So actually, this would be very thick walled gun handles just like the thin wall barrels. I like that a lot. You don't see one every day and that makes it doubly special. Wouldn't be holst without a gun with three barrels. So this little triple barrel beauty has three 8x57JRS barrels. Swing off mount system, open sights, beautiful little acanthus adornments. This is a really beautiful gun. And the fact it's got three barrels makes it at least 50% cooler than anything with two barrels. So this really is French Best by Arms Mathalon. It's interesting, you know, the style is very different. Actually, I kind of dig French style. Look at the border around that checkering. Different, but I really like that, actually. I really like that. The headwork, the engraving, just the way this thing is put together, let alone the fact that it regulates and works of a double trigger system with three barrels. Don't ask me how that works, actually. It's fascinating. What an awesome machine. I was supposed to be doing this in a members video sash. Too late now, I'm gonna have to do a different members video. So you know we like big guns here, um, and that image of Dave getting pounded by the four ball is by far one of my favorite things of all time. This auction, they have got an amazing selection of big ball guns. And actually to see so many nice guns together is a really rare treat. So we're gonna have a look through all of them quickly. Probably the most interesting of the lot in that this gun is affordable, very likely utterly affordable. To boot, is a 10 ball over and under. They are not particularly common, but it's a 10 ball over and under that actually feels pretty good. There's your new steel high pheasant gun. How do you like that? That's, it's a nice, cool thing, but not as cool as this. Just a big, beautiful thing. And this, the Damascus J Manton side lever. Double eight. This feels much finer, as much as it's a bit small, it is just a lovely thing. That's nice. And the whole thing is just nice. But it's not the biggest. And bypassing quickly a probably more achievable single shot with actually an adult length stock on it is probably more reasonable for most of us. 
the civil service. Civil service CSL 25 Haymarket, London. That's interesting. Um, bypassing this, and even this, the constructed for Messrs. Guy and Moncrief of London. Beautiful little hammer gun. We we'll move on to probably the coolest, only by virtue of its size, and obviously I think bigger is better. The John Harper black actioned single four bore. What a big, beautiful gun. That actually, no. <laughs> I just think this is absolutely amazing. Three Price Street, Birmingham. What an amazing looking gun. And superb fun. And because you can, comes with a snap cap. Peter Dyson and Son Limited. So you can actually have a little go. If that is what your heart desires. They're so big and amazing. And now for something a little bit different. We're in the antiques room. We're going to take a little break and have a look at a few things. Uh, first of which must be this. This is an Ottoman dress pistol. White metal, potentially silver, with coral. What an epic looking thing. Look at that pow shell gun in the bargains last time, and I thought that was epic. But you've just got to admire the craftsmanship and the culture and just the fact that it is something just a little bit different. I like that a lot. Apparently worth about a grand. Which to be fair, I think for what I would class very much as art, but it's a gun, so that it's acceptable for you to hang on the wall and don't feel like you're defeated. Um, I think that's beautiful. I don't know, I really think that's absolutely beautiful. Or at least kind of beautiful enough. I know it's a gun channel, but I think most people who like guns will certainly <laughs> appreciate the size of this knife. I can't quite describe the weight, but this weighs more than some of the guns here by quite a margin. Something that you weighed a lot is this. So we looked at a howder pistol last time. This is a Char Charles, Charles Lancaster howder pistol. Little 20 bore esque thing, but in an over and under variant. That is interesting, only by virtue of it being an over and under and that being the godly barrel combination, although I'm sure I'll change my mind later. The interesting thing here is the way the grip sits. So actually, if you just point it like you would a pistol, it automatically points down. Obviously, Tigers don't jump out of trees half as often as they run up, jump up your elephant and try and eat you. So it needs to be very natural to point this pistol like that. Pum pum. Try to decide the grip shape if that is just to sort of protect your hand and stop it kicking back too much or to take some of the recoil or whether in my head like I feel that you would be scrabbling. Like you're gonna say, there's a tiger coming, hold on because you'd have shot it with the rifle. At which point you're grabbing this out, you're probably grabbing it like that, like that, like anything, and it's probably designed to ergonomically fit your hand either one way or and manage in some way. I don't really know. I love these things. Like, before I die, I will shoot one, but fairly close to death because I quite like using my wrists, and to break one unnecessarily would be, well, anything in the name of YouTube, right, Sash? You always look at some of these things and think, that would never have been very reliable but it was certainly cool. To be fair, I look at a lot of new stuff now, I think much the same, so, hey ho. Mm. Wouldn't be hoax. Without a knife gun. One for something, and one for sharpening pencils. And a gun, for um, shooting annoying bees. What an awesome thing. I love them. I'm gonna have to get myself one. You want sweet? This is sweet. Banda in Munchen. An over and under double rifle. First off, look at the depth of the etch in the check in the Damascus, sorry. It is beautiful. I love the flat filing on top of two round barrels stuck together with these strange little pipe ribs. That is gorgeous. And the ribs are in, in themselves their own independent Damascus. Let alone look at the front. Look at the rifling on that. Pop out ramrod. Double hammer percussion. All right. Up until this point, I think this is a gorgeous, gorgeous rifle. And at that point, it's Germanism comes out. Don't get me wrong. This is beautiful. 
and it is old, so it is forgivable. But this sort of really heavily raised cheap piece has never done things for me. What has is this kind of carpentry, cabinetry, beauty, gun makery, either way. And do you just think that sort of stuff would not sell on a modern market whatsoever? No one would pay for it, I don't think so, actually. Like, if someone said to me, do you want a... Um, the problem is we don't need stuff like this anymore. This has been replaced. Remember those rifles in the other room that have the pop-up pouch that the bullets goes in? Yeah. That's kind of the modern equivalent of that. But even then, people in this country generally don't want to pay for that kind of thing. We're all into magazine rifles. This still, and that still is a very European kind of thing to have. You we're, just, it wouldn't even have any utility, is what you say. Oh, I can imagine all the, all the room for activities. Like, what are you going to put in there? Like, yeah, fair enough. What are you going to fit in there? Two bullets? Like, that would work, but at what point is that just an inappropriate place to keep it? Our licensing laws mean you have to take them out every time. Uh, cleaning patches? No. Money? Maybe. Uh, a, a pair? Tip. Yeah. A tip. Maybe a pair of gloves. Like, my nitro gloves, I always forget gloves when I go stalking. Like, can you imagine if you have a little glove pouch on your gun? I'd buy into that, if nothing else. Fair enough. But there is a strange thing in the UK with rifles, certainly, is that people always go and buy really professional high-grade ones, even if they're only doing sort of very small amount of stalking. Whereas in Europe, stalking is sort of that pleasure angle that they see it as, and we kind of all lean into the professional angle and the play angle with our shotguns. We all buy much fancier shotguns and less fancy rifles. Nine times out of ten. So, if something similar was built on a shotgun, don't ask me what utility was. Maybe a pull through um, tip. Last. <laughs> I don't know about you. I think that's gorgeous. Before we finish up on the sealed bid stuff, the little gems, have a look at that. A four barreled rimfire with rotating firing pin. If that doesn't get you going, I don't know what will. So this brings us up till the end, and the end is going to be a little dabble, hopefully, in what we're going to get to revisit, but we're also hedging our bets just in case we can't come back for the sealed bid. And we picked 12, which I have been picked 12, these are not my choices. Guns. Ish. These are at the sealed bid, which is I think in January time. Which, to be honest, I always feel a bit more comfortable with. All these guns in here really put me in a bad place, because I can't afford the ones I want. That makes me truly sad. As much as it brings me joy to look at these kind of things, but I like Ferraris, because who doesn't like beautiful things? Where to start? This is probably not a great one, but it's a good enough one. This is a Furlac Italia, Austro-French, no, Austro-Italian <laughs> mixture. Uh, it has both Italian and Austrian proof marks, or so I am told. It is an interesting little cookie. You know, this is a really nicely built gun, actually, when you look at it. And if I said to look at that checkering, it is what, like 32, 34 lines per inch? That is insanely fine, very hard to do checkering. The engraving is all hand cut by the look of it. You know, this is a really nicely built gun. And the beauty of the sealed bid is something like this is like 300 quid. And you know what, it, it sort of handles all right, it looks good. You know, it's a really good way to dabble in side by sides. It's a lovely gun. Is it valuable? No, not really, uh, but I don't believe you're buying a gun like this because it's valuable, right? Because it's good value. I like that kind of thing. Oh, stop screwing the top there, all engraved in. This is a good looking gun. Now it's time to grab some side for side, a Beretta as part of his selection. So obviously, Simon, the side for side man grabbed two Beretta side for sides, a pair, well not a pair, but two 626Es. That is like, one of the original Beretta side-by-sides. Back when, I hasten to say, they were perhaps a little bit more reasonably priced than they are now, they actually made this, which is a more entry-level version, or was a more entry-level and affordable version, and they currently do, which is the Parallelo, which is worth every penny of what it is, but it is twice the price of a Silver Vision or something. Anyway, actually, this is number three. No, that isn't labelled in anyway number two, so these aren't even, were never together. What a stunning little gun. In a 20 ball, no less. Awesome. They are, well, I don't know what they're worth. Not in the sealed bid, but if you would like a reliable side by side that will more than likely take steel. Okay, next, what's this? A WH Pollard, a London side lock. I think Simon said to me, and this is the best example, or a good example in the sealed bid of what one can buy for under a thousand pounds for a London made side lock that is beautiful. 
it's got the character and quality that you want to decide on. But because it is not a big name, it has very limited value. That's... Well, it does put it back to the steel thing, but this gun, more than likely, it's got a bit of choke in the left barrel. If you had that taken, there's no reason you couldn't go and put, and even with that choke in there, there's no reason you couldn't go and put steel through this and actually go in the future and own this gun for no money and have endless fun. Ah, this is a bit more like it, isn't it? Maruku. That Eight, is a bit of you. 800 SW trap with proper choke in it. Parallel, what? Nine, 10 mil rib. Plenty of tarnishing, but the action actually is still minty black with just the silver around the edge. It just shows it's been loved. And you know it's been looked after and used enough because the black's worn off the grip as well. Monte Carlo stock, polyurethane, lack of finish. This is a gun. And you know, what's this gonna be worth? 500 quid in the auction? Probably less. 350, 400? Sealed bid, isn't it? So it's gotta be, gotta be worth a try. Problem is, at what point you should stop buying good enough guns? Uh, I've got enough. But if you want a proper gun, for no money, buy that. That's a lovely gun. So leading on with the final six guns of the 100 guns I hold. This is an AYA Yeoman side-by-side. -side. Uh, discernible from the number three by the complete lack of engraved border. It is um, very tidy. Original label and probably some stuff in there as well. We bought the cheapest gun on the internet that was for sale retail. You could buy this for less, which is vastly better. There is a, a sort of tendency in some dealers to, to dislike the auctions because people do buy a lot of junk. But if you buy a cheap AYA, the chances are it will work. And it is not junk. They are good. As another YouTuber says, they're basically as good as an over and under. Which might not be true, but hey, they are for what they are, solid. If you could pick that up for like for 30 or 40 quid, why would you not? Next, it is a WNC Scott, treble by action, side lock, ejector, London built, very nice quality side lock. Again, fat file the rib, very nice. The stock works a bit worn, and it's got a really large extension, and it's had some cracks repaired. But guess what? You could own this, which is basically a purdy, in that it's made within a like a kilometre radius. That's a bit of a stretch, actually. But this is a best-ish London gun. You can own it for less than a thousand pounds that was built by hand and engraved by hand. It needs some love, and there might be some better ones in there. But this one isn't bad at all, is it? Boucher Saint Etienne. Strange little French job. Uh, I think we looked at a 12 ball version last time with this locking top bolt. It's the only way this gun closes. It's like a, basically, a, a petit cri off. Something like that. Little side safety. What you can say about French guns, for all of their misery, well, if you bear with me a second, I'll go over here and grab perhaps a more typical one, is that they really, generally, are super light, whippy things. So if you're after a lightweight gun, be that a Darn or a Breton, France really is the place to go. But from my experience, the lightweight doesn't generally mix with the reliability, but they are certainly Lightweight. Be a great little starter gun, um, providing you're not looking for intense reliability. So which one to do last? Uh, let's do this one. Not last. This is an interesting little thing. This is a Stephen Grant. We've looked at a few Stephen Grants, you know I like them. But this particular one, this little thumb opening, non-rebounding hammer gun, one looks like a 16. Safeties for your hammers there. Safeties is the wrong word. Double trigger. Would be beautiful with slightly nicer barrels. This is an interesting gun. It is beautiful. The lines, the grip, everything about this is a stunner. I really like this. However, this one hasn't been registered yet uh, and hasn't had its proof test and I fear that it might not pass it, although I really hope that it does because by God what a gun this would be. Beautiful. I really like that. So last but not least, and this is kind of interesting. This is a pair of guns. Rottweil Supremes. Uh, Italian built, I believe, I say I believe. They're definitely Italian built. They have widish sporter ribs. They have single selective triggers. They are an interesting thing. And what makes them more interesting is this. 
Cool. That is a detachable trigger unit. I know that's not groundbreaking stuff. All right, but when I said you could own this pair of guns, for what? A grand, 1200 quid probably? I mean, it's sealed bit, so you'll own them for whatever you're willing to pay for them. That, to me, has got to be a goer. To have two identical guns, I'm presuming they fit you all right, a proper pair of guns, not to say that you're going to be double gunning with everything, but it's just nice to have a backup. You could go and double gun. You could go and have some fun. You could just get the joy of owning two guns. Not being funny, a detachable trigger gun, for what they are, buy them and break them up. I don't care. Like, these are amazing value, and they are well made. Look, they are polished, they're put together. These are a not bodged set of guns. I like a lot. And actually, as detachable trigger systems go, that's really good. Right, that's nice, it's simple. These are definitely worth checking out. So that was it guys. That was a long and mildly rushed 100 guns at Holtz in the uh, video sweatshop that we've turned this room into today. Guys, thank you so much for watching. And I'll finish with this. A DT-10 Trident in the main sale. You really will never go wrong with an old DT-10. That's all I really have to say about them. Guys. Thanks for watching. Let me know your favorite in the comments below. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, join as a member, and you get to see that epic pair of guns there, uh, if it is epic indeed. Take care, guys. Enjoy lockdown. We'll see you soon.